Have you ever looked at an ESP32 and wondered why are there so many pins and what do they do? If yes, then you are at the right place. I'm going to explain you what each pin on this ESP32 does with a project. Although there are almost more than 10 types of ESP boards available, we will select the most common one, the ESP32 Dev Kit C board. This board is an original board from Espressive and has 38 pins. But as we are broke people, so we'll go with the clone version, which has 30 pins and is available on Amazon easily. Although the ESP32 chip has 48 GPIO pin in total, only 25 of them are broken out to the pin headers on both sides of the development board. These pins can be assigned a variety of peripheral duties including power pins, GPIO, ADC, DAC, touch pins and communication pins. Let's start with the power pins first. ESP32 is a low power microcontroller and needs only 3.3 volts to work. There are total of 4 power pins on this board. V in pin receives 5 volts from the USB and regulates it to the 3.3 volt using an onboard voltage regulator. 3V3 pin supplies 3.3 volts to your connected sensors and modules, while both the ground pins are at zero potential. Next, we have the GPIOs. The ESP32 board comes with 25 GPIO pins which can be used for different tasks depending on how we program them. ESP32's GPIO are super flexible and we can configure them however we want. This image shows you which pins can be used for your projects and which are not suitable. Take a screenshot for your future references. Let's talk about analog pins which are used for reading signals like light or temperature. There are total 15 ADC pins on ESP32. The ESP32 has two 12-bit ADCs. For example, GPIO 36 is an ADC 1 pin which reads signal in a range from 0 to 4095. Unlike Arduino boards which has a 10-bit ADC and reads signal from 0 to 1023 only. This means the ESP32 offers four times higher resolution, allowing for more precise analog readings. The ESP32 board also has DAC, Digital to Analog Converter Pins. DAC pins GPIO25 and GPIO26 convert digital signals to analog, useful for sound or other analog output tasks. The coolest feature of the ESP32 is the touch pins. These are special pins that can detect touch, like a simple button. Pins like GPIO4 and GPIO13 can be used to make a touch-sensitive project. All you need is to connect them to a conducting surface and it becomes a touch sensor for you. The ESP32 can talk to other devices using communication protocols like I2C, UART and SPI. UART pins are used for serial communication with devices like your computer or Bluetooth. We use UART pins to transmit and receive data. The ESP32 has three UART controllers, UART0, UART1 and UART2. UART0, this is used for programming and debugging via the USB to UART bridge. The pins used for this UART controller are GPIO1 and GPIO3 as transmitter and receiver respectively. UART1 and UART2 can be used for general purposes. Transmitter and receiver can be configured on most GPIO pins, but typical defaults are GPIO9 and 10 for UART1 and GPIO16 and 17 for UART2. I2C pins are used to connect sensors and modules. For I2C, you generally need two pins, one for data and one for the clock. On the ESP32 dev board, any GPIO pin can be configured for these functions. But typical defaults are 
data pin GPIO 21 and clock pin GPIO 22. SPI pins are used for fast communication with devices like screens or SD cards. The ESP32 also supports several SPI buses. For the VSPI interface, commonly used pins are GPIO 23, GPIO 19, GPIO 18, and GPIO 5. We also have some special pins on our ESP32 dev board. The EN pins reset the ESP32 if needed. EN pin is also connected to a push button switch that can pull the pin low and trigger a reset. RTC pins. The ESP32 has a special deep sleep mode that helps it to save power when not in use. You can use an external button like a touch sensor to wake the ESP32 and resume its work. Strapping pins. Strapping pins determine whether the ESP32 enter boot mode or flash mode. Most development boards handle this automatically using built-in USB serial circuitry. If you connect external components like sensors or button to these pins, they might interfere with the boot process, causing upload or boot failures. Avoid pull-ups or pull-down on these pins when you use external devices. If you face upload failures, disconnect peripherals connected to these strapping pins. To sum up, the ESP32 dev module has a variety of pins, from power to communication, analog to digital and touch sensitive to RTC. You can easily connect a wide range of sensors or module for any project you have in mind. I hope you gained some insights about ESP32 through this video. If you have any questions, make sure to put them in the comment section. I will add all the codes used in this project in the description for you. And as always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the bell icon for more ESP32 projects.